A well-tuned PA gives you a better mix. And the easiest way to tune a PA is with data. Even if you don't have a digital mixer or an expensive mic, you can still use data to measure and then get that balanced PA and amazing sound. Nothing in life is free, so you need a little bit of equipment, but I'm going to show you how to measure your sound system with a little analog mixer, a little bit of outboard gear, and a cheap little measurement microphone, plus, of course, your laptop. Practice makes perfect, and the sooner you start system tuning, the sooner you will be better at tuning systems. This is going to involve a bit of EQ, so I would check out my free EQ guide at offshoreaudio.no forward slash EQ or in the description. But let's dive in. Let's cover what we need to get started. We're going to need a laptop. Any laptop will do. It doesn't need to be particularly fancy. We're going to need a cheap measurement microphone. You can get one from Behringer for like $30 or something. It will get the job done. Obviously, we need our analog mixer. We need a sound card to connect that microphone to our laptop. And we need all of the appropriate cables to connect our mixer to our speakers, our sound card to our mixer, and our microphone to our sound card. We're also going to need some way of applying EQ to the master bus. And if you're on an analog setup, that's most likely going to be a graphic EQ. Most analog setups I've seen have a graphic EQ in there. And if you don't and you want to tune your system, you really do need to get something like this. So the way this is going to work is that we're going to use the software to do a comparison, essentially, right? We're going to generate pink noise, just broadband noise in our software. And then we're going to send that software to our mixer through our EQ and out of our speakers. We're also going to tell our software to listen to that noise before it was sent out of our speakers. So what's going to happen is the software is going to hear the sound coming out of the speakers. It's going to know what that sound sounded like before it left the software. And it will be able to tell us the difference in between. And what's causing that difference it is the speakers and the room. We can then use EQ to compensate for the difference that the speakers are making. So let's get our laptop open and we'll open up Open Sound Meter, which is an open source measurement software that you can download on a sort of pay what you want model. So you don't have to pay anything if you don't want to. You need to connect your sound card to your laptop, just as you normally would. You then connect your microphone to input one of your sound card. And then you're going to connect the output of your sound card, one or two, doesn't matter, into one of the mixer channels. On the right hand side on the software open sound meter we want to click on measurement that's here and then down the bottom you'll see that there is m for measurement channel and r for reference channel on m we want to pick input one on our audio interface so that is our microphone which is measuring the room and the speakers and then for r the reference signal we want to scroll right down and get to loop and what this is is this is just a loop back of the sound generator the noise generator in the software the next thing that we want to do is we want to click on our generator on the top right here and we want to select the output for the generator where that noise is going to go when we turn it on so we want to select our sound card and we want to select output one that is the output which is then connected on to the mixer so that's how we're sending the generator out of our sound card into the mixer and further on to our speakers you can now turn the generator on in the software by just clicking up here. You'll see in your measurement that the second channel has audio, and that means that the loop back is working. And then you should also be able to see on the channel on your mixer that you are getting pink noise in. That is coming out of your sound card and going into the mixer. If not, double check the volume on your sound card and the routing on the software. You can now turn that input channel up, turn the master up, and the sound will come out of the speakers. Make sure that you flatten all the EQ on the input channels. You don't have any high pass filters on or anything like that. So the sound is just coming in and going straight to the master. Step two is verification then. Before we get going with EQing and measuring our system, we want to just confirm that every single element in our system is working. And we have a nice pink noise generator hooked up to our mixer to do that. So we just turn the generator on and then we can turn our input channel up turn our master up, and then we can use the pan control to just pan it left and pan it right. And what we're looking for is we're looking for the exact same sound coming out of the left side as it's coming out of the right side. We don't want it to be a different volume. If there's something wrong here, then you might have to double check your speakers, double check your cables, make sure that volume and EQ settings on the speakers are identical. If you've got separate subs, then you want to turn those subs on separate from the mains and double check each one of them as well. Next, we'll set up for a measurement, right? So we're going to click up the top here and change it to magnitude. And the magnitude graph is just a line, right? And if the line is flat, if it is at zero, what that means is that there is no difference at any of the frequencies between our reference signal, the pink noise generator, and the signal at the microphone, the room, 
the speakers, the microphone. Now that's never going to happen because of the way that sound interacts through air and everything. There are no perfect speakers. It will never be flat. We're not even aiming for it to be flat. You just need to know that when you're looking at this line, if there is a sort of dip up at the low frequencies, that means there's more bass being produced by the speakers than was being sent into them. If there's a dip down at the high frequencies, that means that wherever you are measuring the speaker, you have less high frequencies than were being sent into it. Again, this is really natural because of the way that sound moves in the air, but you need to know how to read it. So down the bottom here, we're going to set our averaging to 5 and then 16. This is just a good starting point. Basically, it means that we are averaging some measurements over the course of multiple milliseconds to compensate for any sort of sudden differences in measurement. It gives us a more general view of how the speaker sounds, but that's not super important right now. So we'll place our microphone about one or two meters in front of the PA system, in front of the speaker that we're measuring, and then we will turn the noise on. We'll make sure that the pink noise is panned entirely to the speaker that we are measuring. We'll turn the gain up on our microphone to make sure that we get about the same gain level on our microphone as we do on our signal generator. And you can see that on the right hand side of our measurement software. And then we are going to apply our delay compensation. And this is just the software accounting for the time it takes for the sound to reach the microphone, right? We'll click to store the measurement, then we can stop the noise, move the microphone back about halfway down the room in the middle of the listening area and do the exact same thing. So still on the left-hand side of the PA, still just taking that measurement. We do not change the gain this time. This time, just leave the gain be. So then we take that measurement and we move the microphone to the back of the listening area and we do the exact same thing measure the left-hand side one more time. So after we've taken that first measurement, what we do is we move our microphone back into the room to the main listening area, right in the center of the listening area, but directly in front of the left-hand side of the PA. We don't change the gain, we play the noise, we reset our delay timer to get the correct measurement again, and then we store that trace. And then we do exactly the same thing at the back of the room. Reset delay, store the trace, same gain. So step three is let's take some time to look at these measurements, apply a little bit of EQ and try and get them to look as nice as possible, right? So as we said in the beginning, totally flat is completely unattainable. What's more natural to see because of how sound interacts in the room is a tilt up in the bass frequencies. So that means there is a boost in the bass frequencies and a little bit of a roll off in the high frequencies. And you can find sort of templates to follow online. If you just Google target traces, then they'll come up. The first thing that we're looking for actually is uniformity in level or as close to the same level as we can get at the front and the back. So you see this top trace here is the front, right? And naturally that's going to be louder than this bottom trace, which is the bottom trace at the back. What we want to know is how much louder it is and at what frequencies, right? So we can just have a look at these lines on the graph here. And essentially what we're aiming for is we're aiming to have it within six decibels. Don't want it to be more than six decibels quieter at the back than it is at the front at any given frequency. One thing we can actually do about it is that we can raise the speakers up. And by raising the speakers up, you increase the distance from the first row to the speaker. So that means that you get a more even level across the whole listening space. If your last row is out of the coverage angle of the speaker, then you might change the speaker angle to make sure that you are covering that back row. So before we make any decisions about whether we have too much treble or too much bass or whether there's a dip at some point in the frequency spectrum, we want to line these traces up, right? And you can just press control up when you've got a trace selected to move it up. And we want to get them as close to each other as possible because once we do that, we can start to see some patterns, right? We can see that there's a big dip here about three kilohertz. We can also see there's a big dip here at about 200 hertz. And there's quite a lot of buildup in the top, in the high frequencies, in all of the traces, right? But now that we've got an idea of the problems that we want to fix, we can just turn these traces off, right? And then we start a new measurement. We'll pop our microphone back in the center of the room because we know that from looking at these traces, it's a fairly good representation of how the listening area is. And then we turn our measurement on again. Make sure that we set our delay, don't change the gain, and then let's have a look at what we've got. We can now use our graphic EQ to reduce a little bit the high frequencies and increase a little bit the low mids and basically try and get the frequency response, the trace here, to line up as much as possible with our target trace, this green line that we have here. And as you can see, I got that top at least a little bit even, and I got a little bit more even bass in the bottom. Now this is only a 15 band EQ. 
If I had a 31 band EQ, I would be able to be more precise. I might be able to address some of the other problems, but we work with what we've got. At the end of the day, once it's done, copy your settings from the left-hand side to the right-hand side, and then walk around the room and listen to music. Does it sound natural? Does it sound the way that you want it to? If you do have a digital mixer and you'd like to see how to do this using the noise generator on the mixer and the onboard EQ, I'll leave a video here. Leave me a comment, let me know if you're tuning analog PAs, and like the video, subscribe to the channel if this was helpful. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.